Welcome biology students to this tutorial on how to do a t-test in Microsoft Excel versions 2007 and 2010. Before you do this tutorial I recommend you do the tutorial on how to make a box plot because that's the first step you should do when you're trying to see whether there's a relationship uh, whether you, when you're trying to see whether there's a difference in a continuous variable between categories of a categorical variable. In this case what we've done is we've graphed wingspan for female and male butterflies of the species Pieris repe. And we see that males on average have a, a, long, a larger wingspan than females. Our t-test is going to tell us whether this is a statistically significant difference or not. The purpose of statistics such as the t-test are to quantify and standardize what scientists say is similar or different. So if we leave it to qualitative judgment, one person looks at this graph and says, yeah, there's a difference. Males are bigger than females. Whereas someone else who's maybe a bit more pessimistic looks at this and says, no, there's not much of a difference. Statistics takes that judgment call right out of it. So we're all dealing with nothing but numbers. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's do this t-test. We're going to do a t-test to see whether there, there is a difference in wingspan between male and female butterflies. You go to the data tab and you find the data analysis button. If this button is not in your version of Microsoft Excel, then click the help button to find out how to install the data analysis feature in your version of Excel. It's very straightforward, it just takes five minutes. Within the data analysis options, we're going to go down to the t-test. And as you can see, there's three different t-test options. We're going to be using this one the most often. t-test to sample assuming unequal variances. This t-test makes very few assumptions about the data which is good for us because some of our data are going to be a little crazy. Okay, variable one range. This will be our female wingspan and then we'll compare it to variable two range which will be our male wingspans. Variable one range. Here we go, here's the female wingspans, I just selected them. Variable 2 range, I select the male wingspans. Hypothesized mean difference. This is where you set the null hypothesis for your t-test. In most cases that we'll be using, the mean hypothesized difference will be zero. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference in wingspan between male and female butterflies of this species. Check this box if the two variables that you're comparing are completely different columns and you've included the column headers. In my case, I've had wingspan as just one column and I've just selected the data for the two sexes, and so I'm not going to check this box because I don't have any labels for them. Alpha is by default 0.05 and that's where you should leave it. Alpha is the threshold of significance for a test. So you can set it to what you want. For example, for some medical tests where they want to be really sure there's a, an effect of something, they set it down to 0 0.01 or even lower. But in biology we're quite comfortable with 0 0.05 and that's you'd need to justify any reason to not have it as 0 0.05 because it's a convention. Output options asking where to spit out the t-table. We're going to tell it Please put the t-table output right there. Put the top left of it right there. We're good to go. Okay, there's our t-test output. Variable 1 and variable 2. Remember, we didn't include headers, so it, it doesn't know what to call these things. But this, w our first variable was female wingspan, and the next one was male wingspan. It gives us the means, and indeed these means match up with the means we had previously calculated by, uh, by ourselves 
for the purposes of our graph, so that's nice. It calculates the variance, the sample size for females and males, hypothesized mean difference. Uh, you can't read all these things in this column because the column is too narrow for all the text. I'm going to widen the column a little bit so you can read more. Degrees of freedom is 15. Uh, this test that we have, remember we used a t-test assuming unequal variances. Because this test makes few assumptions, some of the the sample size is eaten up by fulfilling certain statistical requirements that you don't really need to concern yourself with. It's just that if you're wondering why degrees of freedom is 15 instead of something like uh, n minus 2 being, oh, well, being 15 in this case. So in this case, it's you can pretty much ignore everything I've just said, but sometimes your degrees of freedom here won't match up to what you expect it to be, and that's just because of the type of t-test we're running. This is the main number that results from all this other stuff. This, All this stuff is just kind of intermediate to give you this guy. Negative 0.84. The negative sign you don't need to care about. Whether a t-stat is positive or negative is irrelevant, because you're only be, going to be concerned with the absolute value of your t-stat. Comparing the absolute value of your t-stat, which I'll just highlight in yellow, you compare it to the t-critical threshold for your test. There's these two rows concerned a one-tail t-test, and these two rows concern a two-tail t-test. Which test you run will depend on your data set and your type of question. But in general, by default, you should go with a two-tail test. A two-tail test looks at whether there is a difference in either direction, whereas a one-tail test only looks at one direction. So a two-tail test looks to see whether females are bigger than males and whether males are bigger than females, whereas a one-tail test would only look at one of those two uh, discrepancies. Not a discrepancy, whatever you call it, a difference. So we're going to deal with a two-tail test here. And so the critical T value is 2.13. I'll highlight that guy too. So we compare our T stat that we got, the absolute value of it, to the critical T for our test. The critical T is going to depend not only whether it's one tail or two tail, but also your degrees of freedom. And in the appendix of your lab manual on page 125, uh, there's a list of the critical T values for different degrees of freedom. Because the absolute value of your T stat is less than the critical T value, that means your P value, which is right here, should be greater than 0 0.05. And indeed it is. 0.4 is greater than 0 0.05. What this means is you cannot reject your null hypothesis. There is no statistically significant difference in the wingspan of female and male butterflies in this sample. So even though we see in our graph that males tended to be bigger than females, it's not by enough to be considered statistically significant, at least not with so few butterflies. With more and more butterflies, if this difference were real, then we would eventually get a statistically significant result. But with so few butterflies, it's impossible to distinguish this difference of wingspan between a biological reality and just random chance. So, do not reject your null hypothesis. Report this p-value in your results section to say p equals 0.41, which is greater than 0.05. Therefore, do not reject your null hypothesis. And that's how you do a t-test.